Today, final edition of Cold Pizza, we recap a hectic LSU football season. <laughs> you can say that again. And later on, Patrick Clay and Alex Shaney of Tiger TV's bottom of the ninth join the show to debate LSU's bowl destiny. All that and much more as Cold Pizza starts right now for the last. Welcome back for the final time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bat Brunner. And I'm Derek Kopp. Well, Bat, it's the final show, but we're going to keep it classy here and just save the waterworks for after the show. Real so, classy. how was your Thanksgiving break? It was great. I actually went deer hunting, got me Ooh. one. There you go. Well, how many points? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, food, food's food's food. Food's food. We'll go for it. All right. Now, before we get into our recap, we would like to start with the somber news of LSU's quarterback, Zach Mettenberger, tearing his ACL in the win over Arkansas on Friday. Now, most people remember the amazing catch by Jarvis Landry at the end of this play, but Zach going down is not only sad to see for this team going into the bowl game, but for the senior quarterback who is expecting to make a lot of noise, especially with the draft coming up in April. Now, Bat. What is your take on the Mettenberger injury and how it affects the team? You know, of course, having your leader, or the, you know, the only leader on the team gone for, you know, the final game, and such a big one, of course, it's going to be a bowl game. You know, it, it, of course, it's, it's a detriment to the team, but let's look at the future right now. Anthony Jennings, he had a great last uh, uh, final drive against Arkansas, and now his big in, uh, his first starting game is going to be against uh, you know, a bowl team, a good playoff contender, and... Uh, you know, it would be good practice for him going into next season. The future is now. But besides the Mettenberger injury, I mean, what a season, man. Yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe not the ideal finish that most Tiger fans would have wanted. Those but still, losses. yeah, you know, that's funny for us, right? Yeah. It's still a tremendous season by the Tigers. Now, you got that right there. Most, uh, most Tiger fans expect 10 wins or above through the regular season or else we talk about firing the coach. But considering the schedule strength, Tigers dealt with the season, I would say, it was a success. Now, that, now, out of all of the tough choices that we have made on this show throughout this semester, I believe this is the most difficult of them all. That being said, Bat, who is your team MVP for the Tigers this year? All right, well, you know, Derek, <laughs> this is definitely the toughest choice of the year. But I'm going to have to go with my boy, number 80, Jarvis Landry. Juice. This man is insane. 75 receptions. For 1,172 yards, yards per catch when you do all that division is 15.6 with a long of 45. And hey, let's not forget about 10 touchdowns, which makes him the team leader. And he always gets a big play when needed, especially those two great catches against Arkansas. He's always able to pick on those Razorbacks. Yeah, when you got momentum. Yeah, I know. He's my man right there. But that being said, Derek, who's yours? Now this is tough, but I'm also going to stick with the dual 1,000-yard receiver except I'm going to go to the other side, Odell Beckham Jr. He's got to be my guy. You gotta go. This is a guy. He's a spark plug. 57 receptions, 1,117 yards, 60-yard long, eight touchdowns. You got me there, but Jarvis, you got Odell has a much better return weapon, I believe. He's a much yes. better weapon in the slot, especially on screen plays. His speed can go like that. Also, we saw him in the reverse. I would have liked to see him in the run game a little more this year. But overall, when you wanted a guy that could get you going, get the team, get the crowd back into the atmosphere, Odell was your guy. Hit him on a quick slant. He'd go 80 yards for anybody who'd even touch him. Now, that's, I just love the explosive mix. Now, next up, Bat, who is your 2013 defensive MVP for the Tigers? Well, another tough one, but this time I'm going to have to go with my man, Daniel Hunter. Young guy and by far, in my mind, best defensive lineman we got. 16 solo tackles this year, 37 assisted tackles, 6.5 tackles for loss, two sacks, a forced fumble, leader of this defensive line this year, and he's a youngin'. It was a tough year for the LSU defense, but I still think Daniel Hunter stood very strong and stood out of the line with everybody else, but Derek? One more time. Who's well, your defensive guy? Well, I mean, you're right. This defense was definitely struggling for much of the year this, for the Tigers. But the defensive player of the year for me, it, it's got to be true freshman Tredavious White. I mean, this kid came in and he played his hard out. He came out, played hard every single game, 36 solo tackles, with 16 assisted tackles, an interception, and a forced fumble. Now, those stats might not be really eye-popping, but the fact that he's a true freshman, he's got blood from Patrick Peterson. I mean, he got good blood in there. Yeah. I trust this guy. Three years, I think, is going to be his table. This DBU coming back right here. Now, 
Overall, it was a great season for the Tigers, and we can already cannot wait for next season. But coming up after the break, Patrick Clay and Alex Shaney of bottom of the ninth join the show to debate LSU's bowl destiny. And they're going down. Don't go anywhere. Cold Pete's will be right back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It is a crowded desk, but we would like to welcome our newest anchor, Kelsey Winger. Welcome. Hello, guys. Excited to have you next semester. And then, of course, these two mugs down here, Alex Shaney, Patrick Clay, bottom of the ninth. Guys, how's everybody doing? Oh, you know, pretty good. Good, uh, uh, good to be back. It's pretty very good. warm it down here. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you guys around, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Now, guys, there's plenty to talk about, but let's start with this past weekend's game. Now, the Tigers struggled to beat Arkansas in their final game in Tiger Stadium. Now, how do you guys think that's going to impact the bowl game? You know, no, okay, of we'll course. Take the, we'll take the bottom of the We'll go bottom of the night. Beauty for age, you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go with, uh, i got to say, it's not going to impact them, not going to hurt them. You still got the win. It was an inferior opponent, very inferior, but you still got the win. It was tough, but I don't think it's going to really affect where we're going to go at this point. I'm going to have to go with the same thing that Derek said, just going off. But if anything, you know, th this game did kind of turn out to be a good thing. And as bad as it sounds, you know, we, we do get to have our, our young quarterback come in and get some repetitions. He's going to start working from here. Uh, but I definitely think it makes our team realize that, you know, they're, uh, they're not the greatest in the world, especially they're incredibly vulnerable when they play a team, you know, that's 3-8 and eight at the time. So... We're going to see what happens with that. I think the biggest thing could have been if Zach Mettenberger had gotten injured maybe at the end of the game, yeah. that would have really hurt us. But the fact that Anthony Jennings had time to go in and make an amazing drive, yep. I don't see how that could hurt us. That might give people more excitement. Definitely I think what did. you're really forgetting about is a three-loss season is much different than a four-loss season. You know, we, we, lose, we lose another game. We could be in a much, a much worse bowl. I mean, especially losing to a team in Arkansas that was three and eight going into that game, that would look terrible for the posters. Well, we've still got to see what bowl's coming up, absolutely, yeah, exactly. actually. So. so you guys... Okay, I'm seeing Zach Mettenberger out. You know, I'm kind of upset because I was a Zach Mettenberger fan. I wanted to see him finish. You know, he had at this incredible season, which yeah. I think was he wasn't given enough credit for the work he did. Sure. But so you guys are more on the side where you think it's a good thing that Jennings is going to be able to come in and play, or would you have rather seen Zach be able to finish out his senior year? I like you got this one. Well, you know, I'd like to see Zach finish off his senior year, get his NFL draft stock up. I'm pretty sure it was before this game rated number two quarterback in the draft, something like that. He was projected end of the first, somewhere in the second, maybe third round. But we're, we're going to see what happens from here. Uh, you know, it, but for the future of LSU Tiger football, unfortunately, and I hate saying this because I like Zach as a person, I actually know the guy, it, it, it's unfortunate for this to happen, but for the future of the team, this is actually not a bad scenario. Mm -hmm. Making the best out of a bad situation a absolutely would, would be the best way to put it. Lack of better words on my part, better words over here. I mean, well, that's why we've been here. It's, <laughs> it's, it's worse, worse short term, better long term, certainly for the Tigers, which I think is what you were hinting at. Like, yes, of course, you'd like to see Mettenberger finish out his senior year strong, but giving Anthony Jennings the opportunity to shine once again in a full game really not only, like will give him self-confidence and the team confidence going forward, and I think it only can be a, a better thing. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've seen plenty of um, – Mock drafts that still have him going in that late first round, early second. But I think my big concern with him is that I feel like at LSU he was very um, loaded with talented receivers. He had Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham. And that makes me hope that, you know, he's going to be able to get those receivers somewhere else and he's going to have those playmakers because, you well, know, that could be. Yeah, um, so what bowl game do you guys see us in? Ooh, you know, at this point, I think i got to go with uh, Cotton Bowl. You know, I like us against Baylor. I think that would be a great game. That would be a really high-powered offense against a really – that SEC tough defense. Speed against power, I take power in that situation. I mean, I pray for the Cotton. I hope for the Cotton. It would be the best situation for us. Uh, I'm starting to worry, though, that the Outback Bowl is more like the realistic thing that's going to happen here, and we're going to go up against a team like uh, – help me out here. W which for one? Outback? Yeah. Yeah, we go with Michigan State. Michigan probably. State, that's Nebraska, what I was yeah. thinking right there. Michigan State, Nebraska, see Bo Pelini again. Yeah, it won't be too terrible, but, you know, we're praying for the Cotton. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I think Cotton would be the best-case scenario, but Outback, it just makes the most sense because South Carolina has been to Outback the last two years. Right. We've been to – LSU's been to Dallas a lot lately. I think the team – the Bulls are going to want to mix it up. And it just makes sense. But really, the SEC championship is going to be a thing to watch. Because that, that outcome of that game will affect where else it goes. We can all agree, though. No, no Chick-fil-A, right? No Chick-fil-A. No, no Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah. Thankfully. Hopefully not. Well, guys, thanks for helping us close out the show with some serious style. And now we hope you can join us again next semester for some debates. But coming up after the break, Bat and I saved the hardest-hitting video for last. Most hardest-hitting safety in the league. <laughs> we will be right back after the break. Bye. <laughs>
welcome back to the show. Now, Bat, we have looked at many highlights, but I promise you that this one has the hardest three hits that we've really ever seen this year. For real? For real. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I like, wouldn't lie to you. Let's right? go to it then. We'll see. All right, here we go. This is a punt return. Now, boom, one, two, oh. and wait for the last one. Bang! Oh. Unbelievable. Three. <laughs> the worst part was he didn't score. Now, don't you worry. We got two more views of this. Watch the first one. Comes out of your right. And blindside, boom, <laughs> one, blindside, two, uh, and let's just go for the trifecta, <laughs> boom, three. Those, that last guy is definitely down concussion. These are slow motion. What a block. Take out two no, guys. I have nothing to Takes say. Out I'm in two guys. Guys. Wait, if you rewind, that looks like this dude also takes out his own watch ball. This, this is the best contest. one. Though. Boom. Oh. What an unbelievable. What a crunch. Slow like I said, three biggest hits of the year. Hit. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm bringing that one home. But unfortunately, <laughs> folks, we are out of time for this week's show and for the semester. Thank you for watching. Make sure to catch us up next season. It'll be Derek and I again. Make sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter for the latest news at 2TV underscore sports. For Bat, Seth, Alex, and Pat, and Kelsey, I'm Derek Kopp, and we would like to thank all of our wonderful production staff and floor staff for making all this possible. We would be nothing without you guys. Thank you again for watching the show, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, go Tigers. You're all invited to the Bulldog tonight. <laughs>